Hey fellow photographer, how's it going? I'm Michael Selbe. Today I want to share a super fast, easy portrait setup with you. Uh, it's, it's very fast because I will just use a ring light, an LED ring light for the lighting. Uh, the reason is uh, that we had a question in the Facebook group. Caitlin wanted to know uh, what is a budget-friendly option for a ring light for indoor portraits. And, and I believe the one that I always use is very budget-friendly. Uh, it's um, a ring light from Newer. It's this one. Uh, the, the, the diameter is... Um, Nah, it's, it's 48 centimeters or 18 inch. It's not the biggest ring light, but I think uh, it's, it's absolutely good for, for my use cases. It's 55 watts, which is much more power than I ever need. And it's very budget friendly. It's a, it's a very basic ring light. Yeah? Nothing fancy, but perfect for my use cases. I'm going to use this one and the situation will be a quick portrait in our living room. Like, uh, some friends of mine are here and they say, hey, can we have a portrait? And, and of course they want something special, not natural or available light, which they can shoot with their cell phone, but uh, photographer light, something special. And then I can use the, the ring light. And I wanna go over uh, how I do that and probably the top three mistakes that I see in our Facebook group with ring lights, because you, you, you can screw it up very easily if you do it wrong. But let's go through that. Um, I would like my wife Emily to play the friend for us who wants a quick portrait. Emily, can you play um, Hello, friend. a friend <laughs> which <laughs> wouldn't have the patience to wait for a really great big lighting setup but needs a portrait right now? <laughs> okay. Let there be a portrait. Yeah. Okay. So come a little bit closer because this is, this is one mistake that I see so often that people are using a little ring light but they have it too far away. Yeah, with a ring light, you go close in 60 centimeters, two feet. Uh, th that is a good distance because the typical ring light look is you have a lot of intensive light in front of the face, for example, which is good. It, it tones down uh, skin issues, imperfections, everything. And then the light falls off rapidly to the back. That is a ring light look. But if you go away like one meter, two meters with your ring light, you don't have this fall off. It doesn't look like a ring light. It looks like uh, a typical on camera light or something. And then, then the magic is gone. So getting close 60 centimeters. And then I adjust the height of the ring light so that it, um, the center of the ring light is at the height of her eyes. I would say, yeah, this is good. So it's shining a bit downwards on her. And this is also a mistake that I see quite often that Photographers have the ring light just too low. Yeah, they, they, they think the face, the whole face should be in the center of the ring light. But what that does is it, it brings most of the lights underneath the eyes. Yeah, the the, the uh, medium level is over here. It's lighting from underneath, under the eyes and a little bit under the nose. And then you have Frankenstein lighting, <laughs> which just doesn't look good. So bring it high, bring it so that it's, it's framing her eyes, not her complete face. Hmm? Okay, then the next thing is I will expose for the background over here. It's a curtain which separates this room from the next room. The next room you might know from videos or from, from webinars that I do in the next room. I switched on all the lights over there so that we've got it a little bit backlit. Now I will expose for that curtain and uh, I choose f2.8. I want shallow depth of field. Uh, I choose a 60th of a second because that's fast enough to uh, freeze a little bit of motion of the model. And I end up at ISO 400. And this is a third mistake that I, photographers, uh, that I see photographers making. They're exposing for the subject. They say, hey, we've got a ring light. Let's expose for that and so on. And then the background exposure is off because ring light doesn't really reach the background and it ruins the whole photo. Yeah. So expose for the background first and then you can switch on the ring light. I'll switch it on and dial it up so that this, your, your, your subject is exposed just like you want it to be. Uh, there's a dial underneath over here. I think right now I have it on one third power roughly. Uh, there's no scale. It's, it's really very basic, but that's fine. That, that's perfectly all right. It's really fast to handle it. And now I can start taking portraits. 
So I need you with a little bit of smile in your eyes. Yes, that's beautiful. One, two, three. I will quickly show how that looks. Oops, this is the look that we want with the typical rings in her eyes. Alrighty, so let's pose her a little bit. Um, the next look that we do is give me one shoulder in front. It works the shoulder in front and with the ring light we are exposing flat so you don't see the light going along her body, which is okay. Then you can pose in whatever way you want. You don't have uh, bad shadows. Yeah, you can go a little bit back with your hips and, and bend a little bit towards my camera, make it more intense. No straight to me. Yes, one, two, three. Fantastic. Now, could you open it up so that I see your shoulder? And uh, let's make it a real beauty portrait, shoulder free. Okay. So work the shoulder forward and turn it a bit to me. Yeah. One, chin a little bit down. One, two, three. Wow, and now let's go really crazy beauty with, um, or erotic, oh, don't tell her. Um, with your, your hand opening up the shirt half. Yeah, so that it's still Facebook friendly. And chin, a, chin down again. Good. Look to me. Yeah, close it a little bit more. Good. This is enough. One, two, three. Fantastic. Now we got really cool portraits from regular to quite erotic. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, let, let me uh, recap the three mistakes that I just mentioned that I see people making all the time. They're doing, they are setting up the ring light too low yeah, so that it's Frankenstein lighting. No place the center at least at the eyes, at the height of the eyes of your model. They are too far away. And I'll move in the ring light really nice and close, 60 centimeters, two feet or something. And they are exposing for the ring light, not for the background. Huh? Don't do that. Expose everything nice and then dial your ring light up and down so that the subject exposure is exactly like you want it. Uh, now, um, the skin issues and so on, they are ironed out a little bit by the ring light, but they are still there. So if that's, this is a portrait for a friend, I would now still apply some AI skin filter, an automatic skin filter quickly. I would go for uh, Lumina from Skylum. This is currently my, my uh, favorite portrait filter. It's awesome. Uh, if you want to see me or if you want to know how I do that, let me know on the socials and I will show that. Um, but, but don't ask me how this one replaces Lightroom. I see a lot of my colleagues, a lot of photo educators currently promoting it and saying this is replacing Lightroom and Capture One and so on. With the current version of Lumina, I would say this is nonsense. <laughs> it's not going to replace Lightroom or Capture One or anything. Um, but, but, but anyway, I love, I love their looks and I love their filters. And like I said, if you want me to share that with you, let me know on the socials. But most of all, have fun with your ring lights. Yeah, with a budget option like this one from Newer, which is really affordable, but it's all I ever need. Or with your pro options with, I don't know, touch screen, remote controls, whatever tickles you fancy. It's all fine. Have fun with that. And like always, good light. <laughs>